Hey all, Johnny Mullet here with another episode of the Schoolie Maintenance and Repair Series. Today we're going to show you how to service an Allison 3000 or 4000 series transmission. This includes the popular MD3060 and others. Uh, you may find this particular transmission in a rear engine or a larger size bus. Uh, the one we're going to service today is in this um, 2002 country coach allure motorhome uh, this one is cummins powered with an isl cummins 370 horsepower engine uh, your engine may be the same or different but the transmission service will be the same so let's get on underneath this thing and show you what we got going on okay right off the bat i do want to apologize about the lighting that's kind of dark under here but this is the allison 3000 series transmission there's a tag right here that'll tell you all the information you need and you can call your local Allison service facility to get the parts you need to service this particular transmission. So I'm going to apologize again for this footage. This might not be the greatest because it's dark and I'm trying to hold a camera, but we're going to make this happen. So first thing is you're going to find a drain plug. And let me move this up. I'm going to get my tablet a little bit dirty. But right here is a drain plug. And it's just a 3 8 square plug. And I already drained this transmission. So I don't have to make a mess while I'm doing the video. Um, so you just take a regular 3 8 ratchet. Again, I apologize for this video. But you'll get the general idea when we're done. All right. So you just thread out the drain plug and boom, there's going to be fluid coming everywhere. You see that? So this is just a regular 3 8 drain plug. As you see, more fluids coming out. I already drained it, but after putting the plug back in and a few days later while we were waiting for parts, blammo. Okay, so let me find my rag here before I destroy my camera. Now underneath this transmission, you are going to find two filters one of them on the far side over here has been removed this one has also been removed but I put it back in just to show you guys that there's six bolts on each side so each filter has six bolts holding it in they're 15 millimeter bolts they're not real tight it's nothing to worry about so you go ahead and get your bolts out so for the sake of time, I only had two holding this in to make this video for you. So there's, uh, and it dropped right in the pan. What do you know? So let me move this over this way a little bit. Hopefully you all can get the gist of what's going on here while I try this one-handed operation stuff. And I just dropped the camera straight down, but that's okay. I'm going to keep on talking. And I will get you guys set up here as soon as I get this bolt because I have to hold this with my thumb. Okay, Johnny Mullet, get your video straight. You need a video, dude, I'm telling you. All right, so anyway, the filter comes out like this. See that? Nothing to it. So you get the bolts out, you drop the filter out, and you're done. You gotta clean this gasket surface. Get a nice sharp little razor blade and very carefully without gouging the aluminum, scrape the gasket material off. Like I said, this is going to pour a lot of transmission fluid out when you remove the filters, so be prepared for that. And now let's get somewhere more comfortable so I can show you what to do with the filters and how to swap them over. Okay. I got this little makeshift workbench here going on, so it's just temporary, just for the just for the video. But anyway, by looking up the numbers, I was able to find this high capacity filter kit right from Allison Transmissions. Um, maybe your local international dealer or other truck dealer would have Allison parts available. You'd have to call around to find out who your closest or local Allison dealer is. 
Uh, this part number is 295-58328. And this is for the MD3060. Um, it comes with two filters. It comes with a little instruction booklet and new O-rings. And it also comes with new gaskets. So, like I said, there's two filters, you get two gaskets, two large O-rings, two smaller O-rings, and you also get an O-ring for your drain plug. Isn't that nifty? They thought of everything. Can you believe it? So anyway, take a screwdriver, gently pry the filter off. It's going to be a little snug, but don't gouge the steel. You can do it nice and easy, and this filter will come right off. And then once you get it so far, she should just come off by hand if it wants to. There we go. So that'll leave you your base plate. Uh, the base plate basically has two O-rings on it. There's one little O-ring here. And you might need a screwdriver to work the larger O-ring from the bottom. And there's the O-ring coming off right there. So now you have the old gasket material. Like I said, sometimes the gasket might stick to the transmission side or on the filter base. But regardless, the gasket has to go. You can basically peel off the gasket material until you get most of it off by hand. I don't recommend using power tools, you know, or a Dremel or a die grinder. A simple razor blade does the job. And it, it'll just peel if you're real caref careful. You're not going to gouge the aluminum. You know, you're just going to scrape the old material. See that? Just coming right off. And, you know, a little time and a little patience. You can work that all that gasket material off. And then you have a nice clean base just like this one. So I'm going to get up and we're going to come on in a little bit closer so I can show you how to do this. There's nothing to it. So this is your filter base right here that's already prepped and ready to go. I'm going to set this aside. So, like I said, you have a, um, a larger O-ring, and that larger O-ring goes on the very bottom of the base. Just like so. Make sure it's all the way around. See that? So there's one O-ring, and then you get this thinner, smaller O-ring, and that goes around this part of the base, which is the, the groove right here that you can see. Just work it around nice and easy. Just like that. And then your new filter, you basically work it on there, it'll go. Sometimes if it's a little tight, you take a little bit of lube. I have this uh, little thing of O-ring lube right here. A uh, little bit of O-ring lube. Lube it up. There's water-based, there's oil-based. It don't matter, just lube it up. And then you should be able to put this filter on just like so. So there is your new setup. Easy peasy. So I clean the other one up and I get it ready. And then we put the new filter on this base. And just like I showed you underneath the vehicle, it's very easy to bolt these back up. Like I said, there's six bolts per filter. Put a little lube around your O-rings. Make sure your gasket material is clean. Make sure your gasket surface is clean on the transmission. Um, you put your new gasket on, just like, it's gonna be a little bit of a puzzle because it's uh, kind of kind of different there. But there it is right there. Gasket lined up. It don't matter if you mix them up, both bases are the same. So you won't have a problem there. So basically from here you put the drain plug back in with the new O-ring that they supply for your drain plug. 
you put your new filters back up in and now we're going to talk about transmission fluid for the Allison 3000-4000 series transmission. The transmission fluid that your Allison dealer is going to recommend is Allison Transcend Fluid. Now this is for most modern or newer Allison automatic transmissions. You can also run this stuff in the older transmissions like the AT545, you can run it in the 643. Um, the only thing is, is you got to flush the old fluid out before putting the Transcend synthetic fluid in. So this is the one that Allison recommends, but there are other fluids that are uh, acceptable to put in the Allison transmission. And let me show you. We've been using this product from Schaefer's. And this is um, All Trans Supreme Automatic Transmission Fluid. And it does meet the specs for the Allison transmissions. Now we get it in the five gallon bucket and a five gallon bucket is, you know, it's cheaper because you get it in bulk, but you're not gonna be able to pour a five gallon bucket. So what I did is I poured um, a gallon at a time into gallon jugs to make it easier to fill the transmission. So filling the transmission is kind of simple. And if you have a rear engine, let me grab my light. Let's go along, I'm not gonna pause it again. Let's just go along for the ride, take a little tour of the shop. Okay, I'm going to grab my light right here. Now, there are two ways to check transmission fluid with the Allison 3000-4000 transmissions. One of them is through the control panel on the dashboard. And the other is via the dipstick. Now, there's the dipstick tube. Now, as I showed you, there's no way I'm going to dump a five gallon bucket to fill this. So I rigged this funnel up with a zippy tie to go into the transmission dipstick. And I got the dipstick right here somewhere. Yep, I just dropped it. <laughs> but any hoot, if you're changing the filters and you are um, draining the fluid, it's probably going to take anywhere from 14 to 20 quarts of fluid. If you're draining the torque converter, also it might take more. So I think with the service that I'm doing is all you're gonna need is to drop the fluid, drop the filters, and a simple uh, five gallon bucket of fluid will do you good. So slowly pour the fluid in, basically, just like doing a car. Um, what I would suggest, put about three gallons in, in the transmission, slowly pour it in, start the engine, let it idle, and crawl underneath and make sure there's no leaks. And let the engine warm up. Um, it won't hurt to go ahead and cycle the transmission through neutral, reverse, and drive to get the fluid pumped through the whole system. And then after the vehicle is in neutral with the engine running, insert the dipstick and check your fluid level. That is the most accurate way is through the dipstick compared to using the control panel on the dashboard. So today I'm not gonna show you how to start the engine and use the touchpad on your transmission to check the fluid. If you have a manual or you can look it up online, you can learn how to do that. But I don't recommend using that method to check your transmission fluid after doing a service. Um, if you're just you know, driving on a long trip and you wanna see if your transmission fluid is full, according to the computer, you can use the touchpad. But I highly recommend using the dipstick. It's the most accurate way to get a reading and make sure the engine is fully warmed up to operating temperature. You pull the dipstick out and check it. Make sure it's in the crosshairs or where it's supposed to be. It's not that hard. It's not that hard at all. So checking the fluid cold, there's a cold zone. I always prefer that you check it hot. After you do your transmission fluid service, take it for a test drive. Make sure it shifts correctly. Bring it back home or to the shop or wherever you're at and double check the transmission fluid after a drive cycle. 
very important to make sure the fluid is full and make sure it's not over full. If it is over full, you can always go down and drain a little bit out. You're going to make a mess, but it's going to happen. So this episode of the maintenance and repair series is focusing on the Allison 3000, 4000 series transmissions. Your vehicle will probably have the same transmission that I am working on today, which is the MD3060. The very common, very popular Allison transmission. It's a very good transmission. Uh, service intervals, you have to check your owner's manual and see when they recommend to service the transmission. I'm going to guess around every 60,000 miles would be a good idea to change your fluid and change your filters. It's not a bad idea to keep up on your maintenance. You got to keep up on your transmission service because that transmission will be an expensive one to replace. And nobody wants to replace a transmission while they're enjoying their dream. Thank you for watching this episode of the Schoolie Maintenance and Repair Series. We will see you for more videos down the road.